why Oswald Mosley is the most powerful enemy in Peaky Blinders. Now, as you may already know from the channel, Peaky Blinders is by far one of my most favorite TV shows of all time. I mean, I adore everything from the cinematography, the styling, the writing, but the biggest aspect that I love about the show is more so the characters from it. And one of the characters that happens to be one of my favorites is the season five antagonist of Oswald Mosley. Let me just say, you've come to my attention. Now, just to clarify before I start getting canceled, when I say that he is one of my favorite characters, I'm not talking about his political ideologies or his love for fascism. That I'm completely against. But what I'm referring to as to why he is one of my favorite characters is how he is able to make one of my other favorite characters, Thomas Shelby, who I've always seen as the most strategic and powerful character in the show, turn into Mosley's bitch. This such strong change in power dynamics is something we Peaky Blinder fans have never seen before but it's something that we can learn a lot from regarding the game of power and strategy. We finally see Tommy meet his match, which leads us to the question of, how did Mosley drive Tommy, a man that seemingly is the one always in control, to the brink of suicide? Well, one way Mosley achieves this is by using the 15th strategy of war. Control the dynamic. The forcing strategies. People are constantly struggling to control you, getting you to act in their interests, keeping the dynamic on their terms. The only way to get the upper hand is to make your play for control more intelligent and insidious. Instead of trying to dominate the other side's every move, work to define the nature of the relationship itself. Shift the conflict to terrain of your choice altering the pace and stakes to suit you. Maneuver to control your opponent's minds, pushing their emotional buttons and compelling them to make mistakes. If necessary, let them feel that they are in control in order to get them to lower their guard. If you control the overall direction and framing of the battle, then anything they do will play into your hands. Now, I have touched on this strategy in the past, ironically in the cases where Thomas uses it, which is what makes him such a powerful character. But for the first time ever, by the end of season five, we see Thomas completely out of his depth. Oh, he's not, I don't know. I don't fucking know. Doesn't make sense. Even though he has been through some tricky obstacles and definitely has had to overcome challenging situations, we've never seen him in a position as to where he is completely overwhelmed. Mosley is like a Tommy Shelby 2.0 and it's like for the first time, we start to see Tommy as being the weaker one and he's also on the receiving side of his own techniques. I mean, take a look at this scene here in season two where Tommy makes a power move and breaks the frame in a meeting with the IRA. Watch how the dynamic changes. As soon as he starts to recite information, that catches Irene off guard. Your name is Irene O'Donnell. You have a son at the Shuttywood Road School in Harborn. He has arms on his legs. His name is Sean. He comes last in every race. Poor boy. Poor boy if the race was important. Do you know what I mean? Irene O'Donnell. There are other ways of carrying out this mission. Please allow me to put a bullet in this scum tinker's head. No. He researches his enemies. That's why he's been chosen. Now after watching that, take a look at this scene and watch how Mosley uses this exact same technique against Thomas, but on steroids. He knew that there would be no point in attacking Tommy directly. So watch how he dismantles the whole frame and gets to Tommy by using Arthur and Michael as pawns in order to shift the dynamic into his favor. We would like to talk business. 
Michael. Michael Gray. You lost all your cousin's money in America playing the fool. A nightclub in Detroit called the Gladiator as your regular. You lost the money and found a wife there. And poor old Arthur Shelby standing there at the window is afraid his wife will never return. My spies tell me she's been seen with another man. Arthur. Arthur. Let's kiss yourself well. And bingo. 20 seconds in and I have them speaking their wog lingo. <sighs> See how Mosley absolutely destroys Tommy's whole frame that was designed to intimidate him. Even though I don't agree with his ideologies at all, you can't fail to admit that this was an absolutely badass from Mosley, and that is what is meant by controlling the dynamic. When it comes a time for you to strategize against an opponent, your task is to first recognize the struggle for control in all aspects of life. It is in our human nature to strive for power and the ones that claim that they have no interest in control typically are the most manipulative of all. Whenever two people or groups interact, there is constant manoeuvring between them to define the relationship itself, to determine who has control over what. Once you come to understand this, it will unlock the door for you to study the art of moving your opposition like pieces on a chessboard with purpose and direction. Instead of trying to dominate the other side's every move, you work on the nature of the relationship itself. This is what Tommy has always been good at, but it's what Mosley is an absolute genius at. He is the one that determines the overall pace, direction and shape of the relationship itself. And one way he does this is by shifting the battlefield to his favour. An enemy will always want to naturally fight you on a familiar terrain. Terrain in essence means all the details of the battle, such as the time, the place, what is being fought over, who is involved and so on. But by subtly shifting your enemies into places that they are not familiar with, you then start to control the dynamic. Without realising it, your opponents will find themselves fighting on your terms. The crazy thing is, is that this is what Thomas tries to do multiple times to Mosley. One being in the meeting in his office, and the other being at the party at his house. An evening with a tribe of gypsies. <sighs> this was a strategic thing to do, as he wanted Mosley to get onto his terrain, to make him feel more intimidated and more susceptible to his influence. You both met bad men before? The man we're about to meet is the devil. To a normal person, this may have worked, but not to a strategic genius like Mosley. Even though Thomas tries to shift the battlefield to his terrain multiple times, Mosley always seems to be the one that comes out on top. May I take a cigarette? Please. He does this by using the exact same strategy that Thomas tries to use against him. But again, he puts it on steroids, as instead of concentrating on the physical battlefield like Thomas does, Mosley concentrates on the psychological battlefield. That investigation of the dead journalist, the queer, I've made that go away. Read it and uh, come back to me. Next time, bring only an open mind and a cigar to celebrate our union. Every time he meets Thomas on his terrain, he works and gets into his mind by making him feel a stranger on his own terrain, giving the impression of pure confidence and making a show that Tommy trying to shift the battlefield to his terrain isn't working and that he isn't falling for it. Something that is completely unfamiliar for Thomas. 
which by ironically doing so, shifts the battlefield into Mosley's favour. Another example of this is at the ballet event at the Shelby residence. For the first part, it feels that Tommy is finally taking back some control over Mosley by not announcing him and making him wait for his arrival. In society, you greet a guest, you don't leave them hanging, looking around like a fucking dog. We even get a glimpse of him feeling rather embarrassed as his cocky attitude, no pun intended, towards Lizzie backfires. Actually, it was an evening wasted. For the champagne and brandy you bought me. As I recall, it was the booze that put you to sleep a little prematurely. But as we all know, this was only temporary, because as soon as Mosley makes his passionate speech, he flips the whole battlefield back into his favour, again using Tommy's own strategy against him, but on a much more strategic level. What the fuck are you doing dealing with a man like that, Tommy? Yeah, ain't enough to trust me. Again. <clears throat> I'm going to fuck the swan. Somebody go and tell her to come to my room. How do you know she'll come? Because they always do. This is just a clear example of what it means to control the dynamic. The whole goal is to shift the conflict to the terrain of your own choice. You accept the battle, but you alter its nature. You don't allow your enemy to get comfortable or fight in their usual way. And that's what makes Mosley so powerful. If your opponent likes to move fast, you move slow. If the issue is regarding money, make it seem about morals. If they want to try fight over a particular issue, or try to assert their presence over you, reframe the battle to encompass something larger and more difficult for them to handle. Mr. Shelby, I do have plans. I will have need of men like you. Except, of course, there is no other man like you. You, in particular, I need. But please, don't imagine I would trouble myself with turf wars. You have many enemies. Shuffle the pack and pick another card. It seems that in season 5, Tommy is slowly starting to lose his mind. And it's like he's losing his touch. Instead of trying to control the dynamic like Mosley does, he just gets caught up in trying to dominate Mosley's every move, which is what causes him to tire himself out make mistakes, push people away, and in the end, lose control of the situation. Mosley executes the control the dynamic strategy perfectly on Thomas, and is an example that you should look at when you're trying to strategize against your enemy. Think like a boxer. The superior fighter doesn't rely on his powerful punch or quick reflexes. He creates a rhythm that suits him advancing and retreating at the pace he sets. He controls the entire ring, moving his opponent to where he wants them to go. By mastering time and space, he creates frustration in his enemy, which causes them to make mistakes and engenders a mental collapse that precedes the physical. He wins, not by his fists, but by controlling the ring. The whole point of this is to place your opponent, physically and psychologically, in a place to which they are completely unfamiliar with. And once such control slips from his hands, he will compromise, he will retreat, he will make mistakes, and eventually affect his own destruction. Now don't get it twisted, I'm fully aware that Tommy is working undercover, in order to eventually bring Mosley down. And I'm pretty sure in season 6, we are hopefully 
going to see Tommy learn from his mistakes and come out two steps ahead of Mosley in the end. But it's just that I've had loads of requests to cover Oswald and I just wanted to highlight some very powerful principles and provide an analysis as to what made him much more powerful than Tommy in season 5 and that was by controlling the dynamic by continuously shifting the battlefield to his own terrain by not just a physical means but by also on a psychological basis and this is a strategy that you can use in order to grant you more power in your life and help you become much more of an effective strategic thinker Now, within the last year or so, the Golden Knowledge Channel has been getting some rather decent traction and I just want to quickly celebrate with you and thank everyone for helping us reach the big 10,000 subscribers. The channel itself has always been a little side hobby of mine and the character breakdowns that I make are not easy to create and it does take me a lot of time to break down the characters you want to see. But with all the love and support that I've been seeing as the channel continues to grow, it really makes me feel that it's all worthwhile. So I just want to say on behalf of myself and the Golden Knowledge team, thank you so much for all your support. And to celebrate us hitting 10k, I'm going to be launching something very special for you very soon. It's been about 6 to 12 months in the making and it still needs a lot more work on, but it's been something that I've been working, creating and researching on non-stop for nearly over a year now but i'm telling you when it launches it is going to be an absolute game changer for you now i'm not going to give too much away just yet but let's just say if you love the character breakdowns that we create and you're always left with wanting and wondering more on how you can think more strategically and powerfully as a person then make sure you click the link in the description to sign up for our email list as you'll be then the first to know more about what we're creating for you and how it's going to be an absolute game changer for your life and for your business. So make sure you click the link in the description and sign up to get notified because I'm telling you right now, you definitely won't regret it. And if you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and leave a comment below on what your thoughts and feelings are about Mosley comment some of your favourite lessons and quotes from him and let me know what character breakdown would you like to see next. And if you are new to the channel, welcome to the channel and to all our loyal subscribers, we are glad you are here. We do some of the best character breakdowns on the whole of YouTube and we aim to produce at least one high quality animated video per week. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any golden I'll see you soon.